Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a customer engineer focused on management technologies. Today's discussion is part two of an ongoing series focused on configuration profiles in Microsoft Intune, which of course is part of Endpoint Manager. Today's discussion will be a continued introduction to configuration profiles. We started part one with a very high level introduction. This will be a little bit of a step down now focused on Windows devices, there will be a, a little bit of, of, of detailed discussion around a couple of things, you know, as we go through. Still kind of kind of introduction, right? Um, on that vein, I'll probably say this a couple of times, there's enough detail in configuration profiles that we will focus on certain parts of the configuration profile options to detail those items in a lot more uh, a lot more granular way, right? The purpose of today's discussion is just to kind of give you a a look at the Windows specific settings, focus on a couple of them with the idea of what's possible, and I will highlight some of them that we will focus on in uh, future sessions. So here's our agenda, like uh, like normal. What are configuration profiles? Why configuration profiles? We'll look at the requirements of these, uh, how it works. We'll walk through uh, the details of Windows configuration profiles. We'll see a couple of them uh, actually in action, and then we'll start to wrap up uh, from there. So what are configuration profiles? Well, if you watch a few of these uh, videos on configuration profiles, especially the early ones, you'll see this same detail repeated. Really, configuration profiles can be settings. They can be configurations. Uh, they can be options within a setting that you might want to implement on a device. Another way to say that is that configuration profiles can really be viewed as the location in Intune where if you're ready to replace your on-prem GPO infrastructure uh, through Active Directory and move that to something like Intune, so you can do total modern management and even avoid on-prem you know, AD join and so on, that would be configuration profiles, right? So a little bit more on that in the next slide, but that's why this is such a huge area, such an important area to understand. So why do we care? Again, picking up on the last thing I said, Azure AD. So there are a couple of ways to proceed with managing devices. One would be to join that device uh, to Azure, uh, sorry, to, to hybrid join that device, which means it's joined to on-prem AD and it's uh, registered in Azure AD. And that's what a lot of organizations are doing. The challenge with that is it keeps a dependency on legacy kind of approaches to management, GPO specifically, coming out of uh, AD. If that is your requirement, if that is your dependency, then there will be additional things you need to understand. In order for GPO to apply to a device, you have to have that device connected to the corporate network, VPN, uh, on-prem, whatever, right? And if that device is not connected to the corporate network, then if there's a need to do a very emergency type change in GPO, that change won't happen until the device checks in with on-prem AD. If instead you join the device to Azure AD and move your configurations into Microsoft Intune uh, or Microsoft Intune and in combination with Configuration Manager, uh, then you can absolutely push those changes to the device very quickly as long as the device has an internet connection and is configured properly to communicate with Config Manager. That's a whole different discussion. This is Intune focused uh, and is, is enrolled in Intune. Then you get that configuration pushed out right away. It is the true modern management uh, endpoint, if you will, is to get that done, right? So a lot of work to get there, not minimizing that, right? But, but it's a huge thing. Right. Uh, so configuration profiles, very, very robust, right? The very ability to move your GPO settings into MDM illustrates how robust this, uh, this capability is. The ability to drive Azure AD versus hybrid Azure AD scenarios, 
uh, the configurations that are grouped together that will help you decide on specific configuration types uh, is a big deal. It is focused uh, by platform, right? So you can avoid getting confused looking at an iOS setting when you really want a Windows setting. Uh, as an example, we, we, we focus by platform the options that are available, also by configuration. So you'll find, if you haven't found already, that the configuration profiles is where the bulk of the settings deployed through Intune are available. And there's so many of them that we categorize them into groups. And even within groups, we have other groups, right? And all of that with the idea to help you stay focused and not get lost in the myriad of potential configuration options uh, that are out there, right? And then in terms of robustness, I'll just mention this, I'll detail it here in a minute. Uh, yeah, there's all the options that are available in the Intune UI natively. There's also a whole set of options that may not be exposed yet in the Intune UI. Don't know how many there are, haven't looked in a while. Uh, but you can access them because they're supported by MDM using what's called a custom configuration. I'll show that to you uh, and discuss it a bit in a minute. Okay, so what are the requirements for configuration profiles? Well, certainly you need Intune. You need Azure AD because Intune device enrollment requires Azure AD, and then you need your device to be enrolled. So why do I even call that out? Aren't all devices that are managed enrolled? No, they don't have to be, right? There's a discussion that we had uh, when we talked about client apps about this thing called MAN, Microsoft Application Management. It's been re titled to app protection policies, where you can decide, hey, I want to manage the applications running on a device. So things like Adobe or uh, Office apps, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, Teams, whatever. But I don't really want to enforce management on the device itself. And so that absolutely will allow you to introduce management to some level on the applications running on the device without managing the device. That's the distinction. Here, we do need the device to be enrolled in order to deploy configuration profiles. Okay, so how does this work, right? How does this work? Um, this graphic you might recognize from a session uh, that I did on how configuration synchronization works. That's why Windows Notification Service is there, but it's a good graphic to kind of illustrate how things stay connected. So ultimately, we have Intune, which is a part of Azure. Azure Active Directory is in the back end. We have Windows Notification Service that is certainly out there, not just for Intune, but is used by Intune in a Windows world. And so we have our Intune uh, tenant uh, out there. We have devices enrolled to the Intune tenant. So as the administrator out there configures different settings and configuration profiles, uh, certainly the device, when it, if it checks in on its normal uh, interval, if the admin initiates a sync, if the user of the device initiates a sync, then that sync will happen with Intune. The configuration uh, that is waiting for that device will or user will come down at the time. Uh, if the configuration is just, uh, can, uh, just built and then deployed, required, whatever, then uh, that will trigger most of those configurations, all of them, I think, within the configuration profile world, will trigger a uh, request to Windows Notification Service to tell the device to check in because it has new configurations waiting. The device then checks in and receives the new configurations, applies them, right? So that's why when you do create a configuration, you see it appear on the devices that can communicate with uh, Intune and the Windows Notification Service, they'll appear within minutes, generally, right? And that's why. So this is a very, very, very high-level uh, overview. If you want to know more about the synchronizations, please uh, take a look at the How Syncs Work video uh, that I did on that topic. Okay, so that said, let's actually review some of the options that we have in Intune for managing a Windows device. I'm going to grab the Intune console here. Okay, cool. I don't know why I need to adjust the default resolution. Anyway, uh, so here's my Intune console. Uh, under Devices, I have the ability to go directly to uh, Configuration Profiles here, which would allow me to then browse through all of the device configuration profiles by OS. 
I know that I'm interested in Windows for this discussion, so I'm going to focus on Windows and then configuration profiles under Windows, right? So it's only going to show me, allow me to select Windows-based options for configuration profiles. I've got a few demos here, which I'll show you in a minute under the uh, In Action section, but for now, let's just kind of go in and look at what the options are. So if I go create a profile, then I have the Windows options here that I want to look at. I'm going to stay Windows 10 and later. And then I need to choose what specific profile I want to deal with. Right Now this is where I will walk you through some of this. And then I will tell you on each one as I get to it, which ones I'm planning to do a dedicated session on. Right, And the first one we'll stop at is administrative templates. Right. So this is one I'll show you briefly, and it is one that I, I do plan to do a session on uh, on its own. So I'll just call this test, I'm not going to save it, and hit next. And so what you'll see is you're going to see the ability to look at all settings, uh, user configuration settings, computer settings, you know, whatever. As I scroll down, you're going to see uh, some of these are out there for configuring in the control panel, Edge, the Office apps, you know, whatever. As I scroll on down you'll see uh, the option to configure Skype for business and scroll, keep on scrolling, uh, Windows components, system components, right? And so you might think, hey, this might be some of the GPO stuff that I might need to know where it is in Intune. Maybe I want to move from GPO to modern management. Well, certainly this is a place to be able to help expose some of these settings, right? So I'll click on system just as an example. Again, we'll detail this more uh, later. And then here are all of the different settings categories that I can configure, you know, on the system. So maybe I want to look at Elam uh, and see what options are available there. Scroll on down uh, and I look, oh, look, here's, um, here's this option. I'm going to click on it. And what do I get? I get a, de a description, a very detailed description of what this is. I have the ability to enable it, disable it, or not configure it. Again, very much looks like group policy, and uh, this is certainly one of those areas where you can go through and figure out what you want to do and how you can use this to replace some of the on-prem group policy stuff in this area, right? More detail on that later. So I'm going to go back and create another profile. I'll look at uh, Windows 10 and later, and then I will stop at custom. So I'm stopping at custom here. I'm not going to dig into it because I'm gonna talk about it a bit more later. So I will just identify it and pass on by. There's settings for delivery optimization. So delivery optimization is really, really important in the Intune world, right? So for uh, the config manager side of Endpoint Manager, we've a number of different options to support caching of content, optimizing the use of WAN links and such with these devices. We have things, you know, third-party solutions. We have branch cache. We have peer cache and so on. In the Intune world, we have delivery optimization. Certainly, there's tie-ins to delivery optimization with Config Manager, things like software updates and so on. But in, uh, in the Intune world, we rely on delivery optimization to provide that level of caching where we can take advantage of other machines near us and so on. Again, a big topic, one that we'll probably stop at and talk about in a bit of detail. So device firmware configuration. So being able to manage the, the firmware versions on your device, you can do through here. Device restrictions, we'll stop at this and look at it more uh, in a minute. Being able to look at uh, options to domain join your device. If it's not domain join, you want to domain join it, we can certainly do it here. Uh, manage edition upgrades. We'll talk about email probably in a separate session, uh, but there's options to configure email here, endpoint protection. Uh, if you choose to use endpoint protection in the uh, world of, of Intune, we have the ability to configure certain settings. So there's a whole bunch. So this is one of those things that's an example of a container that contains other containers, right? Endpoint protection, it's a big thing. And so we have to you know, give you the defender uh, application guard controls, the firewall controls, the encryption controls, and on and on we go, right? So if we expand some of these, you'll start to see, oh, here are the options where I can go configure, right? Let's look at the, uh, the firewall. If 
right here are the options where you can go configure firewall settings. And there's a, a number of them. There's even uh, other things within the setting that you can configure, right? Uh, here's uh, disk encryption, or uh, right here, Windows encryption, that you might want to uh, put on there. So you get the idea. This is a very nice UI that will allow you to configure these items that you might be interested in. The thing that you need to know about, about these configuration profiles is where to find the various settings that you want. That's why we group them the way that we do, because hopefully the name of the group uh, here gives you an idea of what, what settings uh, are where, right? So we have a section for identity protection. Uh, kiosk mode, so this is one we'll slow down on and take a deeper look at, right? Hopefully you're getting the idea that there's a lot here and we're gonna look at a lot as we build through the series. So kiosk is one of those things, you know, if, if you have a situation, so I, I always think of maybe, I don't know, uh, call centers or maybe a retail location or something similar. If you have devices that you want to uh, give to your employees or have in a location, and they need to be doing a single purpose or you know whatever the case may be you don't need to just have them you know unfettered access to do anything on the system whatever you can do something like kiosk mode we'll spend some time talking about kiosk mode how to configure kiosk mode uh you might also there's another one that I'll show you briefly uh multi user pc shared pc i, I think is the name of it uh, that I have configured, where that might be an option too that doesn't push you into full-fledged um, kiosk mode. But that's one we'll definitely stop and take a look at. Here's some more Defender you know, settings uh, out here. Network boundary. So being able to help define your network boundary and what different locations, uh, how they're separated geographically and networking scenarios over in those geographies and so on for being able to use with services like Windows Information Protection in the uh, in the Windows world. Right? Here's certificates. So uh, I've already got recorded part five of this series where I detail PKCS certificates and imported certificates and SCEP and trusted root certs, right? That's a big, big topic. And so if you're interested in learning how to deploy certs through Intune, which you will need to be able to do that to use in other scenarios, maybe such as Wi-Fi config or VPN config, uh, that part is already uh, complete. It's part five of this series. It's funny, I did part five before I did part one. Uh, so, because uh, it was such an important topic that that is here. So I would say we will detail those. We've already detailed those. So go take a look at part five if you need to. Here's the uh, uh, option for Secure assessment, that's in the education scenario, the shared multi-user device, I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, VPN, Wi-Fi, right? Windows health monitoring. We're definitely gonna stop on VPN and Wi-Fi and take a look at those uh, specifically, right? So that's a general overview of what you have available in Windows uh, Windows management in this section, right? We After, after the discussion here, We'll start to dive deeply into those topics and really focus on those topics in future sessions. Uh, session two, which is this one, will be on Windows. Session three will be on iOS. Session four will be on Android to get the whole uh, uh, ecosystem of operation uh, of OSs uh, kind of discussed in the intro section. I'll do Mac OS probably with iOS. I think we'll see. Um, and, and then we'll start diving into the various topics that are of interest that I detail, right? Uh, like part five, where I take uh, Windows, iOS, and Android and do all of it in one session. I'll do that where it makes uh, sense, like VPN configuration, Wi-Fi configuration. There's things like administrative templates that are Windows only, and so I'll do that uh, Windows focused only. But we'll see those sessions as they materialize coming up uh, coming up after we get done with the intro stuff. Okay, so we did the walkthrough. Now I want to show you some of this actually working, right? So there's there's three areas that I picked out that I'm going to use for demo, right? Uh, the first one is that I want to talk through the idea of custom configurations 
The next one is I want to talk about some items in device restrictions that I'll show you an example of them working and, and so on. And then the third one is I'll just show you the shared uh, PC mode, multi-user PC mode, right? So the first item that I want to discuss, the custom configuration profiles, uh, is a bit of detail. But let me let me scroll down in the Intune console and remind you uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, let me pull back in tune and you'll see that I've added a couple of tabs across the top that will have some documentation I want to review and so specifically uh, configuration profiles I'm going to look at this piece and then custom right here's what I'm talking about we'll get more into this in the Intune console in just a minute uh, okay so the idea of a custom configuration provider. I, I mentioned this already, I'll start, I'll just restate it and keep going. So in the Intune UI, most of the settings that you probably care about will be available to configure in the UI. But there may be, it's been, a, like I said, it's been a while since I've even looked, so I don't know of a good example right now of a setting that you might want to configure that is not available in the Intune UI. But let me give you a couple of examples. So, uh, when Intune first was introduced, one of the big items that people wanted to be able to do was use Intune to configure BitLocker, right? That's a pretty big deal, pretty big ask, right, obviously. But we were building Intune, and uh, it was in the early days, and we just had not yet gotten to putting BitLocker controls into the UI, and so people were, well, how do I do it? I want to be able to do it, right? Or even software updates, some of them, right? I want to be able to do it. How do we do it? Well, uh, instead of just getting frustrated because it's not in the NTN UI, we had to look, is this configurable through the MDM channel? And the answer was, yeah, the MDM function was there. It was ready to go. Uh, it just needed to be added to Intune, and that was on the priority list, and it was being built, but it wasn't there yet. And so we would be able to use a custom setting to be able to address that particular configuration service provider that was built into MDM by using the particular OMA URI to address it, right? Now, I said a couple of terms there on purpose, right? Because they're important. So every device, every MDM managed device, whether it's Windows, uh, iOS, Mac OS, or Android, is going to have capabilities that are addressable using that OS's custom service provider, right? And they're different. The way you do it in Windows is not the same exact way that you do it in Apple is not, or iOS, Mac OS, is not the exact same way that you do it in Android, right? But all, all three, all four, three, whatever, uh, offer this ability to uh, address the... MDM capabilities uh, using the configuration service provider. The OMA URI, that is the format uh, where you address that particular configuration. You'll see that all in just a minute. Another example was Bluetooth. So I had a customer call and want to manage some Bluetooth settings through Intune and said, well, Intune apparently can't do it, so I'm going to have to go look at another solution. And I'm like, well, well hang on, right? Two points here. Just because you can't see it in the Intune UI does not mean that we can't address it, right? And we could through the custom configuration channel. And here's the other part, right? Going to another solution, they may have already put this into their UI, don't know, right? But no other solution is going to really be able to address something and configure it that is not defined in the MDM channel already. The only exception to that is if there's software built to allow for it, right? Like Win32 App Management in Intune, that is an external component uh, that we call the sidecar agent, right? It's not built into MDM. That's way too much detail for this discussion, but just to try to give you some context. So the place to start with understanding what's available to you is through some of the documentation. And that's why I have these additional tabs uh, in, in here. So let me just show you. The first one is just the general configuration service provider reference for Windows. So this will list all of the different configuration service providers that can be 
used on a Windows device to implement changes and manage that Windows device. So here's here's the list. You know, certainly Windows 10 has its big list. We also give you specifics for HoloLens and Surface Hub and IoT that can, you know, what you can do uh, with those. And so uh, review the documentation. Understand what's there, right? The other thing I'll call your attention to is there are certain categories of CSPs, configuration service providers, that the name will kind of give you an idea what you're going to get, but sometimes not, right? A really, really big one that has a lot of stuff in it is called the policy CSP, right? Just by the name, you're not going to know necessarily that it is the place to go for configuring something like Bluetooth, as an example, right? We'll get there uh, in just a minute. Now, um, if I scroll down on here, I'll be able to read some detail. So set your mind at ease. I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to read this to you as we go along. I'm pointing you to where you can gain more knowledge, and I'll point out a few things, right? But it will, it'll tell you what a CSP is. It will tell you that it uses the uh, SyncML um, over this thing called OMA DM. Uh, and then there's the OMA URI, which is the specific path that we use to address it. And so here's basically a list of the CSPs and what OSs are supported. Now, this one's interesting because it looks like there's not any OS supported for account management, right? Not all of them have an X in it. So I've, I question if that's even actually true. But then we scroll down account CSP. So we can see home and business and mobile. And uh, then... Uh, mobile enterprise. No, there's no support for the CSP, but if we're on enterprise or pro or education, yes, we can use this particular CSP there without a problem. So it gives you a really good breakdown of the various CSPs, one, and then where they're supported, right? So if I scroll down to the bottom, that should be the end of this particular documentation. If I can get to the bottom, nope, let me go up, right? Then there's just a little bit more uh, detail of the CSPs that are supported and what OS is and links to that CSP and so on. But you can use this on the side also to go into it, right? All right. Now, another little uh, tidbit of detail that needs to be understood, so I'll mention it here and then try to show it to you, is that not all of these CSPs will work through Intune, right? They're here, they're defined in MDM, but they won't all work through Intune. In order to for a setting to work with Intune, it has to support add, replace, and get operations. Okay, well, how do I know which ones support add, uh, replace, and get operations? Well, pretty easy. If you just go to the individual CSP documentation, you should be able to tell. Like, let's start with accounts CSP, right? So we'll look at the account CSP. And we can scroll down and see all sorts of detail about it. So specifically, here's a graphic that will detail kind of the breakdown in the tree structure for the CSP itself. And so this is a good map to be able to see, okay, here's kind of the breakdown device vendor, Microsoft here, accounts, op domain, whatever, right? And you will see those elements in the OMA URI string that is passed into the custom configuration provider setting in Intune to be able to get down to the level of that setting that you want to address, and then you can change the setting with uh, the options, right? So we'll see that in a minute, but you'll see, you know, again, here's kind of that format, dot, device, vendor, Microsoft accounts, to get to the root level of the account CSP. Then there's details within. So I should also call out that the uh, OMA URI detail is case sensitive. So you need to make sure that you're capitalizing accounts, as an example capitalizing MSFT as an example. If you don't, then uh, it's going to fail, right? So that's the root node. And then we go on down and we can look at options that are available. We can look at the descriptions here. Uh, supported operation add, right? Uh, you can see different other things under here. Supported operations will be listed uh, here. Supported operation add. So you'll find that kind of, uh, kind of detail there. Now let's look at another one. So the policy CSP I mentioned is a big one that has a lot of detail uh, within it. So we can see all of that that I just showed you. 
if I can not policy manager, go up a little bit uh, by clicking on policy CSP, right? And then I have all this detail. I can look at HoloLens. I can look at uh, uh, other flavors and, and so on, like Surface Hub. But I want the top level policy CSP. So I see all the detail about it. I can see uh, descriptions, good stuff, show the mapping, see some of the notes, see the big picture tree and how we access it all, and so on. But then if I want to get down to these specific areas that I can configure, so that all the sync ML detail is really important and it's here, right? But if I keep on going down, I'm going to be able to look at these specific policies. So there's a big group of policies that would be for accounts, right? Uh, above luck, whatever, uh, account policies, ADMX policies, all these different things, right? Just keep on scrolling down. There's a ton of ADMX policies that can be addressed through the CSP. Uh, let me just go on down to something that might be outside of ADMX and interesting. So maybe I want to look at yeah, this TPM. Told you there's a lot of them, almost there. Uh, scroll on down. So uh, let's see, that's application management. Let's go on down. Uh, app virtualization. Let's see. Now uh, we can pick one. That's audit policies. Let me just pick autoplay policies because it really doesn't matter, right? Well, first of all, when I pick autoplay, notice here's kind of the format for getting down to the setting that you care about. So if I look at this, I know that this is supported on pro, business, enterprise, and education. It is not supported on home. Here's the scope for this particular thing, both user and the device, and what it does, a good description of it. And then finally, uh, we'll get into uh, some of the, the settings, right? Um, sorry, so even at the top one, this was not only autoplay, but autoplay for non-volume devices and whether it's supported, where it is, the settings, and so on. And uh, scroll on down, here's another setting, so turn off autoplay. So notice this format, autoplay slash turn off autoplay. What's to the left of autoplay would be that big, uh, OMA URI prefix that would show uh, the mapping into the autoplay setting, and then the autoplay setting has some subcategories within, and the combination of both is the big OMA URI. You will see one of them uh, kind of combined whenever you see the demo that I have in just a minute. And so you can see there's all sorts of detail here. There's settings, so you can get to the um, uh, get to the setting that you care about and then know how to configure it by reading through uh, the documentation. So again, the point of this is not to bore you with documentation that you can read yourself, but to show you where the detail is. So with that detail in mind, let's just shift over to, in, oh, let me show you a couple more pieces. So here's the main CSP doc. Here's another one that is specific to Intune, creating a custom profile setting with Intune. So that's out there. And then uh, custom settings for Windows 10 devices uh, in Intune. So good documentation to be able to read through, get some detail. And that said, let's go over to Intune and look at a custom URI setting. So here's one I've built. And this one, admittedly, is very simple, right? So all this is going to do, look at properties, is define whether VPN is allowed over cellular, as I recall. So I'm going to edit this, right? And so here, uh, set VPN over cellular config. That's my name uh, for this. If I edit it, then you'll see the setting. It's right here. So here's the name. You can choose whatever name you want. You can choose to add a description or not. It is totally up to you. And then here's the OMA URI. This is that specific format. Starts with a dot slash vendor, Microsoft policy. And then it's going to get down to config. And I'm going to config specifically con connector. So this is the precursor part that will allow you to get into the config section of MDM. And then once you're there, you're going to need to specify what you want to config. And that is the uh, connectivity over VPN, allow connectivity over VPN. Right now, in this case, the config to set it requires an integer value of one to turn it on, zero to turn it off. And that's it. So that's a really, really easy config, and it can be very often that simple. Now, you may not have an integer value that you use to specify, right? It might be a string setting, 
that you use to specify something. It might be an XML blob that you use to specify a setting, right? It really depends on the setting you're configuring, the inputs that it requires, the documentation of that setting is really good to help you know specifically what that is. So very, very simple example, but you see it here. Now I've, I've assigned this, right? So we'll look at that in just a minute, but another comment. So this is one custom configuration profile that I'm building. What if I have five or six settings that I need to configure through this custom channel? And what if all of the settings that I'm configuring through the custom channel are related, right? Well, let me give you an example. Using the accounts CSP, uh, you have the option to create an account, local account, domain account, you know, whatever. Maybe it's just local, can't remember, but you have the option to create an account. You also have the option to uh, create a password for that account. You also have the option to add that account to a group. Right. Well, in order to do all three, you would need three settings, but they're all settings related to configuring an account. So you might have uh, a configuration profile here with three settings. I just have to keep adding. Right. No problem. I can just add another one and it adds up to the list here to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And then you save it as one configuration profile. You may have an account CSP profile in general for creating five or six accounts. So there might be 30 entries here, right? And they're all part of one setting. How you do that is up to you on the accounts and what makes sense for the setting, but it is uh, possible. So I've, I've got this created and I have it assigned, right? So let me scroll down. I have it assigned. Now, I'm not going to go to the device. I sent it to all devices. I'm not going to go to the device and find this particular setting uh, and make sure it's enabled. But I know that it's enabled because, for example, I can look at the per setting information. And I know that in my lab, I've targeted one device uh, and I've got one device is compliant with the setting. So I know that's been applied. I can also look at the device status and see that the status has been actually applied for the device, system account context and my context, user status would reflect uh, the same thing, right? And so I have this detail that I can look at, uh, no problem, and it helps me understand what exactly has happened. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. So under Windows, I have this profile created, which I will show you that it actually is in place on the device called device restrictions. So basically I'm building the device restriction policy that I want in place for my devices. So if I look at properties and then edit what I have configured, this is an example of one of those policies that has policies within policies, right? So for example, I have options for the app store that I can uh, configure and scroll down, right? So I don't, I don't think I have anything configured here. Did I allow anything in here? No, I did. So specifically, I uh, I have the option use private store only here that I said allow. Uh, that's not configured by default, right? And then I have game DVR down here that I'm blocking the game DVR. And then install apps with elevated privilege. I'm blocking that, right? Just as an example to show you some settings. So I'm not going to go look and verify those settings, but I will verify the rest. And so also, you know, I have options for cellular connectivity, cloud storage, cloud printer, right? All of these things. Uh, I have another group for control panel and settings. So let me show you that real quick. So here I did say that I want to uh, not configure the settings app specifically itself, but within the settings app, I'm going to block system. I'm also going to block network and internet. I'm also going to block accounts here. Okay. Now this is interesting because if, if you have seen the synchronization uh, session that I did, and even if you haven't, on a Windows device, one of the ways for the user to be able to manually initiate a synchronization with Intune is by going into the settings app and then accounts and then uh, access worker school and then initiating a sync from within there. So if I'm blocking the accounts option, then I'm taking away the option for that user to be able to initiate a synchronization on their own, 
which that may be okay, right? It may be okay because you have other options. Like if you installed the company portal on that user's device, then they can go to the company portal and initiate a sync, no problem. And then also, uh, if you have you know the user working with the help desk and the help desk needs to initiate a sync, they can do that through the Intune console if they have the rights to do so, no problem. And it's gonna go down uh, pretty quickly and sync the device, uh, assuming the Windows notification service channel uh, is healthy, right? So those are the settings that I've actually configured and blocked on uh, on, on the, the um, uh, settings app. So we'll look at that in a minute. Now, another one that I've got to, uh, that I've configured some, uh, we have all these, right? Which I'm not gonna dig into, but then we have Edge. So I have introduced some configurations onto Edge. And you notice that under Edge, there's a number of other categories, right? So, uh, I went ahead and, and experienced or uh, set up the start experience so that when Edge launches, it's going to launch certain pages. So here I've got Bing that should be launched when I open up Edge. And I've also given a URL for a model railroading site, right? Just to pick something that will launch uh, whenever I open up Edge, right? And then other things that I've configured is if I open up a new tab, in Edge, I can specify what URL should be opened in that new tab, right? So I have those that I'll show you. And then there's more, there, there's more things under here that you can configure, which is, again, really important to know where these settings are. The settings are there and uh, there's a lot of them to be aware of. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to close the uh, URL. Okay, or uh, into. So I'll, I've got those configured. I'll show them to you in just a minute. Now, there's one other thing that I've configured, and then we'll look at all of this live. So there's another one here called uh, multi-use PC is what I called it. And then if we go into the properties of it, um, and then look at the settings available, right? There's this thing called sh uh, shared PC mode. So I've enabled that. And so what shared PC mode does is it allows you to basically flag a system as one that is used by multiple people, right? And so it, this is not a discussion of shared PC mode, right? That may be one that we dig into more later. But effectively, you're going to make this kind of a generic machine that you can set up, you know, how you want users to be able to log in if it's a, a, a local guest account, if it's a domain guest account. I've not configured any of that. Uh, account management, whether you want uh, to allow that, disable it, local storage, allow it, disable it, and other things. My whole point in configuring this is to turn on uh, shared PC mode, multi-user PC mode. And one of the things that will flag to you that that's on, so think about a, a PC that, that you use day to day, right? You log into it, you do your business on the PC, you sign out of it, the, you come back in to sign in the next time. and the start screen greets you and says, hey, and gives your name, your username, go ahead and sign in. So the PC knows that you were the one using it last, right? So in my case, on my lab machines, uh, my PCs will typically display uh, that I was logged on last. So Steve Rahi, right? When you shift into shared PC mode, you're basically using guest accounts. And so that initial uh, screen where it specifies a user, it goes away. Right. And so you'll see that in a minute. But again, this is not a discussion of shared PC mode uh, at all. I'm just using this to illustrate some settings. So let's go into my Windows 10 PC that I have set up for uh, for demo. And you see Steve Rahi displayed here because I just signed into it and I'm still signed into it. But and you see sign out down here. Right. So I'm going to uh, sign in and then we'll come back to shared PC mode. You'll see. All right, so uh, first thing I need to do is close Teams. That bugs me. Okay, now two things I'll show you that I configured. The first is the settings app, right? So I configured this to hide certain elements, and I also configured it to not open when I type wrong. Come on. Okay, system running a bit slowly. So we're gonna open that up. Now I'm gonna open up right next to it, settings on my corporate PC that does not have 
any uh, restrictions, right? And so here, I'll just pull this to the side. Notice that I have 11 options here, right? If I pull this into the picture, I have uh, 13 options. So clearly, the restrictions that I put in place through Intune on the settings app are taking place on my managed uh, device. So the things that I should not see would be system. Wait, I see system here. What's wrong? Well, if you look inside system, you see that most everything in system is hidden. Not everything, but most everything is. So effectively, I'm applying uh, those restrictions onto system. Also, I've restricted network, uh, and I don't see network here. I've also restricted um, the ability for the user to go into accounts. There is no accounts here, right? So I know that those are effectively implemented. And then the other thing I mentioned is this is shared PC mode. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this. And notice what happens. When I sign out, it's not going to remember that I was signed in. It's going to just present me back to the main login screen and uh, give me that experience, right? So other user, and I can use guest account here as well. Again, Th trust me, this is not an effective demo of shared PC mode, not intended to be, just intended to show you uh, some detail here, right? All right, so that's really it. Again, this is an intro discussion. It's a little bit deeper than the first intro discussion, added a few things, wanted to share that with you. Uh, in terms of troubleshooting tips and tricks, not a ton yet, right? Uh, you saw some troubleshooting areas, right? When I looked at the per setting section, when I looked at the per user, per device, to make sure that the uh, policy was applied, there's certainly more that we can look at and will as we go through some of these specific discussions. But that's really it for now. So we will go ahead and wrap this session and we'll see you next time.